This lesson is focused on one of the more advanced um, Arnold shaders known as the Tune Shader. This allows you to do kind of cell shaded um, surface textures and shaders onto the surface of any of your objects. So that's what you're seeing here. This is just the live Arnold render view. Uh, this is a simple kind of like egg-like sha egg -like shape that I extruded out these rings out of. And I have applied a Tune Shader. So it's the AI Tune uh, from Arnold and I have a little ramp gradient here of color across it and then you can see the highlights uh, that I've brought into the cell shading of it. But how did I do this? Well, let's start from the beginning. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this. Let's do a new file real quick, new scene. All right, I'm gonna create a similar shape, bring in a sphere. Let's just stretch this puppy out a little bit. All right, face mode. Do a couple rings. Let's extrude them. Cool. All right. Now we have a basic shape to work with, right? Um, so first thing I'm going to do is right-click, or actually go back to object mode and right-click on this guy and assign a new material. I'm going to go to Arnold, and here it is, AI Tune, about two three quarters of the way down. All right. I'm going to go ahead and save this because it does tend to use up a little bit of memory. So um, let's call this Tune 2. Save it to my desktop. All right. So right off the bat, you'll see over in the attributes, I now have this AI Tune shader going on. Um, now if I pull up my Arnold preview, you're not going to see much. Um, well, first of all, let me put a light in the scene. So I'll go ahead and just drop in a sky dome. And even with that, you're not going to see what you have there. It just looks like a standard old shader. So one of the first steps you're going to want to do is go to the render settings. It's up here at the top. We're going to click on the little blue uh, gear icon on the render settings. We're going to go to Arnold and we are going to go down to filter, which is about four little panels down. And we're going to change from the type of filter from Gaussian here. We're going to want to move that over uh, to contour. So scroll down and you'll find contour. And then the setting you set here is sort of like the maximum thickness that all those little contour lines uh, can be. So we could put whatever in here. I'll just type in three for right now. And I'll go ahead and close this. Uh, let's take a look and see if we get anything different. I'm not sure. We still have to do a few settings, I think. Well, there we go. We got a base contour around the outside of it. So that actually activated the contour ability of the tune shader. I'm going to go ahead and leave this preview up here because the next thing that I like to do is I like to go back to the object, go back to the tune shader. So I'm going to come over here to the AI tune shader. You can also, of course, access this via um, your hypershade if you prefer. Uh, but I'm just doing it through the attributes for right now. So one of the first uh, most important things to look at, um, we could always like you know start to play with different edge colors. You know, it doesn't have to be black. It can be yellow. It can be red, uh, green, cyan. I'll stick with cyan for right now. Um, we can also play around with that edge opacity, so we could fade that way back, or it can be 100%, and then we can get down on the scale of it. We can make that way less thick. But remember, the maximum scale is going to be whatever we set in those render settings. So ours was set to 3, so this is sort of like 100% of 3, or going down from there. Um, so I'll leave that at full width. Now one of the big ones is under the next category here, edge detection. Angle threshold plays a lot with exactly what has an edge. Like right now it's just like the profile around the object, but as I bring this down it's going to start to uh, kind of pick up different features of the object. So even just getting down to like 90, right around 85, now all of a sudden I'm going around the rings. If I go a little bit more, now I'm on the inner rings. I keep going, I keep going definitely like a delicate little threshold depending on the model you're doing but as you go down you can get more and more of it now you can see I'm actually getting around some of the like facets of it and if I bring this scaling down as well uh, at the same time I get kind of a finer line to it I could even type in like 0.75 and get a whole lot more of it so the angle threshold does do a lot um, as I'm kind of moving around the object I get a slightly different view of it there. Um, there's other things we can play around with, obviously. You also have UV threshold. Um, you have mass color. Um, and we also have this edge opacity. Um, 
Actually, I think I already showed you edge opacity and width scaling up at the top. So that's the thickness and the opacity of it. There's also this edge tone map, which you can play around with and bring that down and that kind of extends it a little bit further as I bring that tone map down how far into the model kind of going up and down a little bit uh, and now as we come down we can play around with silhouette there's there's a lot of great settings in here that we can play around with um, I'm gonna bring this angle threshold back up just a little bit somewhere right around there that looks good to me it's getting basically all my main edges and now I'm going to come down to base, like the way I brought that gradient in is I come down to base here uh, and we can play around with lots of different colors, like it can change that base color from gray to like, you know, pretty much any color we want, make it white as it was before. Um, but if I play with tone map, you know, uh, nothing's really, not a whole lot is happening right in here, but this is a great place if I go back to white there, that I can insert a gradient, a ramp. So I'm basically going to click on this and the little checker box there. And I want to bring in a ramp, okay? So here we have a ramp, not a ramp shader, just a ramp. So I'm going to type in ramp. There we go. And bring that in. And now I can actually play around with the gradient of color that we're working with here. And so I can bring in multiple colors by clicking. Um, throughout here and I could say let's change this to like green you can start to see how I'm bringing in uh, different sorts of uh, shades throughout this whole guy so there's a little green a little bit of yellow there um, I could go you can click on any of these shapes and, and adjust their color so it started off with black but maybe I want to get back into the green more of a dark green on that one that then goes to a lighter green and you can play around, like I said, you can hit this X to get rid of them. You can also drag them left to right to like, where do I have the gradient start or end? So I'm gonna bring that one back in. Bring this back up to like a light blue. And there we go. Now I can always back back off of this and go back to the original here. And let's bring up under base. Let's go from a white base to maybe like a, maybe not that bright blue, but something a little bit lighter. Actually, I'm going to go with more of a green. There we go. So you can continue playing from here. Um, again, the angle threshold does do a lot. Like how, how much of this do I want to have? Edges around it. How many facets do I want to have? Um, on this particular object, uh, back on the original polysphere, I could subdivide it more if I wanted to. I've already kind of messed with it a little bit though, so I don't want to, you know, make it too funky there. And if I bring back up these settings here, the render settings, and see what happens if I bring this down to like a two, or bring it up to like a five, and how that kind of plays with the thickness overall of the object. So you can get a lot of great variations out of this. Um, you know, you have like specular quality that you can bring into it, and that changes a little bit of the color on the specular weight kind of how things are reflected in there. Um, there's a lot of really, you know, great settings to master in this. Um, I will say that I think the AI Tune Shader renders a little bit, a bit faster than like some of the more photorealistic shaders that are out there. So sometimes it's a nice option if you don't have the ability to do more high-end uh, renders. Um, you know, I just like to experiment and play and kind of see what happens as I uh, play around with some of these different scales and widths. Um, Again, the angle threshold is definitely a key one to like what all is being rendered versus not. I'm going to close this real quick. And let's just see what a, an actual final render looks like of this. So let's bring that up. Give it a second. Pretty clean there. If I bring that angle threshold down to say like 9 and do it again. You see it extended into the, some of those inner ring parts of it as well. Uh, and you get some really nice options there for sure. I could enable silhouette. Then you get like a slightly different like silhouette color than you get on the inside of it. Of course I could change that. I'm going to go back to the live render view. There we go. Yeah, so then I got like the silhouette versus the edge detection on that. I can change this color to like a 
much darker color if I wanted to. So, so many fun ways to kind of play here and figure out, you know, what exactly it is that you want to do and how how faceted do you want the object to be, all of that that fun stuff. So play around with the AI2 shader. Um, and if you want, like I said, you can also bring this up in uh, Hyper Shader. And we can go to the tune. And go ahead and add that. Expand it a bit. And you can kind of see how I brought that ramp into it. And that gradient is in there and then back out again. So nice way to explore it. And you know, you have all your control controls that are kind of an easier way to work with on this as well. Um, so I'm going to kind of just keep playing around. So I'm going to go back to that original that I have, and we'll just look at those settings one more time before we finish this up. So I'm going to go back to this Tune Shader original. So I definitely had a more faceted object to begin with. That was a much smoother uh, model that I was working with, um, So which was why it wasn't quite as tessellated as this one was. So if I bring this back, obviously this one has a, a bit more to it. Oh, my light got a little dark on this one. Let me bring that back up. Let's bring that up. There we go. Bring it around to the light side. So also the light that you use and casting shadows, that's going to bring a lot more. This one actually has an area light instead of the, um, I believe in that, the model that I recreated for you, we just used a sky dome, which really does wash out a lot of the shadow ability. So shadows are going to bring back a lot more interesting kind of like gradient vibes to it. So definitely play around with your light. That's definitely going to affect your shader in some really interesting ways for sure. So go back one more time, just show you the settings on this one. So in this particular one, I had the angle threshold at like 20.87. If I bring that down, Obviously, I kind of bring some more facets to some of the other areas there, and you know, could bring up some of the brightness or intensities of these as well. Bring up some of the width. There we go. Now we can start to see it just a little bit more. Make it a little bit brighter. So a really, really fun shader. You can get some really great results out of it, particularly if you have kind of like more cartoon-like characters and worlds, or sometimes it's just fun to kind of flip the script and see what a toon shader is going to look like on a more realistic looking scene. You can get these kind of stylized illustrator look and feels as well. So enjoy, play around a little bit with Arnold uh, Tune Shader, and uh, yeah, thanks for listening.